Okay, in this video we're going to reduce fractions to lowest terms. Here's page one, and then page two, we're going to do these examples. Okay, and page three, we're going to do these examples. And uh, so, let's start with um, understanding that if you had a pizza, and imagine you cut the pizza into um, three equal parts, right? So each part is, like if I take this part here, this part here of course would be one part out of three, one third, right? Now, um, just for fun I'm going to split all of those parts in half again, okay, like that, see that? So if all the thirds are split in half, I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts, so there'll be six. So, like I could say, okay, you know, this, this is one sixth, right? This is one sixth here. And of course, uh, this part here is also one sixth. And these two together, they make two sixths, don't they? So the two red parts make two sixths, and of course, we know that two sixths is equal to one third. So definitely, I hope you agree, you can see clearly that two sixths is the same thing as one third. Now the funny thing about fractions is that they look completely different. I mean, that doesn't look the same thing as that. There are different numbers altogether, right? But um, putting a fraction in lowest terms means beginning with two sixths and saying there's a simpler way to write that. And one way to do that is to divide the top and bottom by the same number, okay? So I could go, okay, 2, 6, I could see that 2 goes into the top and bottom. So I could divide the top by 2, and then I could divide the bottom by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I guess a uh, slightly easier way to do this rather than writing the dividing things is just to go, look, 2 goes into the top and bottom, 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 6 goes 3 times. You just cross them off and you write the numbers there, and then that's okay, 1 over 3. And uh, you know that that's a kind of a way that uh, will help you out through algebra, and it's a little bit uh, quicker. So um, let's uh, just move on to this example here. If you had uh, inches, four sixteenths of an inch, you take out a ruler there. <coughs> four sixteenths of an inch. Uh, there's an easier way of saying that, isn't there? And we could r put the simplify this fraction, put it in lowest terms. Now, we know that 2 goes into the top and bottom, but isn't there a bigger number that goes into the top and bottom? What's the biggest number that goes into 4 that also goes into 16? Well, 4, isn't it? Alright, and that's even handier because it, it requires less steps now, because I can just go 4 into 4 goes once, 4 into 16 goes 4 times, see that? And the answer is 1 quarter, and I hope make does make sense that 4 sixteenths of an inch would, would indeed be 1 quarter of an inch, right? So uh, you press pause if you like and do this one. How about four eighths of an inch? If somebody said uh, that measures that thing measures four eighths of an inch, how? What's an easier way of of saying four eighths of an inch? Well, once again, we can put this in lowest terms. We can we know that two goes into the top and bottom, but does four also go in? Four into four goes once. Four into eight goes twice. So that becomes one half. So four eighths of an inch is the same thing as one half of an inch, right? Think about money. If uh, if you had five dimes, okay, if you had five dimes, uh, you could say, well, I've got five tenths of a dollar. How much money do you have? Another way of saying that is, what fraction of a dollar? Can you put this one into lowest terms? Five tenths into lowest terms. Okay, so we could put this fraction in lowest terms by dividing the top and the bottom by the same number, by 5, right? 5 into 5 goes once, 5 into 10 goes twice, and we get 1 over 2, 1 half. So of course, if you had 5 dimes, you would say I've got, you know, 1 half of a dollar. You could say, just for fun, half of a dollar, right? Okay, if you had 2 nickels, <coughs> now we went over that, you know, a five cent piece nickel, of course, is, well, there's 20 of them in a dollar. 
So having two nickels is like having, well, 10 cents, right? It's like having two twentieths of a dollar. So simplify this one. Press pause and put this fraction in lowest terms. Okay, so you go two into two goes once. And now two into twenty. You could you could break this up and just do look, two into two goes once, and two into zero goes zero times. And then you have one over ten. One tenth. So two nickels, of course, would be uh, here's two nickels. Two nickels would be ten cent or one tenth of a dollar, right? Okay. So in any case, um, let's go to page. Okay. So let's go to page two, and we'll try six twentieths. And by all means, you can press pause and see if you can do these problems uh, by yourself, and then um, just skip the video ahead just to check your answers. Okay. I'm just gonna go slow for every for everybody that needs needs it. So by all means try to race me and get this done before me. So 6 twentieths, let's see. So we've got to find a number that goes into the top and the bottom. And I'm thinking, well both numbers are even so I automatically think of 2 I guess. So let's try that. We'll divide the top and the bottom by 2. So 2 into 6 goes 3 times. 2 into 2 goes once. 2 into 0 goes 0 times. And so we get 3 over 10, or 3 tenths. So 6 twentieths is the same thing as 3 tenths, just that 3 tenths is in lowest terms. Can we go any further with this? No, you're done. That's lowest terms, right? So um, basically 6 nickels, 6 twentieths would be, th would be 30 cents, right? Or 3 tenths. Here's 6 nickels. Uh, 5 cents times 6, right? six nickels, see? That would be 30 cent, right? Or three tenths of a dollar. Anyway, okay, so press pause and do eight tenths. That's eight dimes. What would happen if you had eight dimes? What would you have if you had eight dimes? That was definitely 80 cent, eight dimes. But um, two in, into the top goes four times, you see. And two into the bottom goes five times. And so we have four over five, four fifths of a dollar is eight, eight times is four fifths of a dollar, right? So that would be the, the uh, fraction in lowest terms. Now when we get to the kind of bigger numbers, 50 over 100, well, one way of doing that is to see that 50 goes into the top and bottom. But if you didn't see that and you said, well, how about, you know, I could start off with 10 into the top. 10 into 50 goes five times, you know. 10 into uh, 100 goes uh, 10 times, and you could get five tenths, right? And at this point, you're still not in lowest terms. You got to keep going, right? So you could go five into five goes once, five into ten goes twice, and you could get one half. So sometimes you'll have to keep going. Press pause and see if you can do seventy-five over a hundred. If you get it in one step, that's great. But if you need more steps, that's fine too. I mean, you'll get it eventually. Okay. I'm going to do it the uh, slow the slow way. I mean, you might say, okay, well, 5 probably goes into the top and bottom. Let's try that. So let's see. 5 into 7. Here's the way. If you, if you compare this to this. See, 5 into 7 goes once. What's the remainder? Remainder 2, right? And now what's 5 into 25? It's 5, isn't it? So on the top I get 15. And now 5 into 100, well, let's do this, 5 into 10, okay, 5 into 10. 5 into 10 goes twice, and 5 into 0 goes 0 times. So I get 15 over 20. Now, that can still be put in lowest terms, I'm not done yet. And what goes into the top and bottom now? 5, right? 5 into 15 goes 3 times, 5 into 20 goes four times. So of course this becomes three quarters. That's not surprising because we started with 75 over 100, right? 75 hundredths or 75 cents. That's just this that's a way of writing 75 hundredths or, you know, uh that that amount of dollars, 0 0.75 dollars or or basically 75 cents is three quarters, right? We could have said, look, 25 goes into 75 three times. 25 goes into 104 times, and the answer is three quarters. 
Anyway, 75 cents is three quarters. I hope you see the connection there, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, there we go. There's kind of we did some fun ones, and then we'll go on to kind of fractions that are just we don't really explain, but we just figured them out anyway. So if you had 40 over 64, see if you can put that into lowest terms. By all means, press pause and then check your answer on the video. Okay, I'm gonna try it, and you know what? I just think four would go into the top, and I, I really do think four would go into here because it, it ends. This number ends in a four, so just for fun, I'm gonna divide the top by four. So 4 into 4 goes uh, once, and 4 into 0 goes 0 times. So I'll get 10 on the top. And on the bottom, 4 into 6 goes once, remainder 2. See that? Right? 4 into 6 goes once, remainder 2. Now 4 into 24, you need to know your times tables. That's uh, 16, isn't it? So I get 10 over 16. And now I can do uh, maybe 2, right? I know 4 goes into 16, but 4 doesn't go into 10, so how about 2? Divide everything by 2. 2 into 10 goes 5 times. 2 into 16? 8 times, right? So 5 eighths. So as long as your answer is 5 eighths, you got it correctly. Some of you might have preferred to start dividing by 2. So you might have gone 2 into that gives 20, you know, 2 to this is 3, 2 to that is 2, you might have got 20 over 32, but eventually you should end up with 5 eighths as you keep cross cancelling the top and bottom, right? Okay, so let's go on to page 3, and we'll do some of these, a little bit uh, longer now. But 462 over 210, what should we do with that? Well, to be honest, 4 might go into the top and bottom, and 8 might, I don't know. But like I, I know that 2 will go into the top and bottom, because they're both even numbers. See, So I'm just going to divide the top and bottom by 2. 2 into 4 goes twice. 2 into 6 goes 3 times. 2 into 2 goes once, right? So I get 2, 30, 1 on the top. And on the bottom, 2 into 2 goes once. 2 into 1 goes 0 times remainder of 1. See that? 2 into 10 goes 5 times. I get 231 over 105. Hmm, that's it. That's an interesting one. So this is a, it's a little bit tricky. Um, and you know, the figuring these out is all about knowing your times tables. Because if you know your times tables, then you know 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Um, 7 springs to mind because look, one of the 7's uh, multiples is 21, it ends in a 1, another one ends in 35. So I'm actually going to see if 7 goes into the top and bottom here. 7 into 23 goes how many times? 7 and 23 goes uh, twice, that's uh, 4, 2 sevens is, uh, oh no, sorry, 3 times, duh, silly me, 21, what am I thinking? 7 and 23 goes 3 times remainder 2, look at that, now 7 into 21 goes 3 times again, see? Now the bottom 7 into 10 goes once, remainder 3, see that? 35, 7 into 35 goes 5 times, okay, so that's given me 33 over 15. Okay, so this is really testing your times tables, these guys here. Now, can you think of anything? This breaks down one more time. Can you figure out what this breaks down to again? Can you think of a number that might go into the top and bottom? Two, maybe? How about three? Does three go into the top and bottom? Yep, yeah, three into three goes once. Three into three goes once. Three into 15 goes. Five times, so eleven fifths. Now, can we go any further than that? No, that's it, right? So that's the answer, eleven fifths. So yes, yeah, some of these are, especially this this step here. You know, you really need to know your times tables to try and figure this guy out. So here's another challenging one: two seventy three over three eighty five. So, any idea? Well, <clears throat> I guess 2 isn't going to work because they're odd numbers. 3, 
Looks like it goes into here, but uh, I need to mess around with this guy. 385. Let's see, 3 into that, you see, goes once, and 3 into 8 goes um, twice, remainder 2, but 3 doesn't go into 25. Okay, so. Um, let's see. Any idea? Um, oops, one second. So 3 isn't going to work because 3 doesn't go into 25 evenly. But you know, and 4 won't go in because these are not evens. 5 doesn't go into both of them because this ends in a 3. 6, um, I don't think, but if you look at the 7's funny enough, if you write out your 7's, 42, then 49, then 56, then 63, then 70. Look at this, 63 and 35. Uh, here's a multiple of 7 that ends in 5, here's a multiple of 7 that ends in 3. So yeah, this is a little bit tricky now, but um, if you try 7 into into the top and bottom, I think that's going to work. Anyway, I'm going to guess that it will. So 7 into 27 uh, goes 3 times remainder what? Remainder, remainder 6. And then 7 into 63 goes 9 times, so that gives me 39. 7 into 38, 5 times remainder 3, 7 into 35, uh, I think that's uh, 5 times, right? So 55, and now, does anything divide into the top and bottom? Well, just to make sure you see the top 39, that is 3 times what? 3 times... 3 and 3 goes once, 3 and 9 goes 3 times, 3 times 13. And the bottom looks like 5 times what? 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 1 is 5 times 11, right? So basically we don't have common factors on the top and bottom, so that's why this guy is the correct answer. Now press pause and see if you can figure this one out. 108 over 180. Okay, now I'll do it. I'm just going to do it by twos, just for fun. I mean, 2 into 10 goes 5 times, 2 into 8 goes 4 times, so I get 54 over. 2 into 18 goes uh, 9 times, 2 into 0 goes 0 times, 54 over 90. And you might actually know your 9 times tables because 9 into 54 goes 9 into 54. 6 times 9 into 90, 10 times. So I get 6 over 10. And is that the final answer? Well, let's see. 2, I think, will go into the top and bottom. 2 into 6 goes 3 times. 2 into 10 goes 5 times. And I get 3 over 5. So this guy becomes 3 fifths. Okay.